Chapter 1771, UAE, 2. I am back. UAE lowered his head to say, his gaze highly gentle as he looked at his little sister. The little girl before his eyes was in the only thing that bound up his whole life and the only kin tied in blood to him in the entire world. UAE smilingly wrapped her arms around UAE's waist as UAE raised his head up, his eyes coming to meet elder UAE's gaze. That pair of eyes immediately caused the blood in UAE's body to turn to ice. Elder UAE had done it on purpose, UAE silently drew in a deep breath, pushing down the rage in his heart. Your elder brother sustained injuries this time round and he needs to get some proper rest to nurse himself. Little Yi, you must not go disturb your elder brother if there's nothing important all right. If you are bored, you can just come here to find grandfather. Elder Yi said in a highly benevolent voice as he stared at Yi's pale face, the words driving chills into Yi. Yi had wanted to turn around to say something but was instead held tighter in Yi's arms. I'm fine. Many things happened in the Pure Grace Palace this time. I will need to speak a little longer to the elder, Elder Yi looked at Yi, smiling strangely. Big brother, you're hurt? Is it serious? Yi asked as she lifted her head, to look worriedly and highly concerned at Yi. Yi's heart almost melted under that gaze and immediately shook his head. I am fine. It's just some superficial injuries. All right. Little Yi should run along now. I still have things I need to talk to your elder brother about. Elder Yi said with a highly amiable smile. Yi looked at Yi, and then turned to look at Elder Yi, before she reluctantly left the room. After Yi went out and only Elder Yi and Yi were left in the room, Elder Yi lifted up his chin and then pated at his thigh. Yi took a deep breath. Lowering his eyes, he went to kneel down by Elder Yi's leg. His knuckles whitened as his fingers dug deeply into his palms, to steadily pummel at Elder Yue's leg in massage. What exactly happened in the Pure Grace Palace? Why had so many people lost their lives? How did you and Chang Huan manage to come back in the end? I saw that Chang Huan was perfectly fine. How did you get yourself so severely injured? Elder Yue asked as he leaned back in his chair, from above in his elevated position. Elder Yui did not care about the deaths of the other disciples, he wouldn't be bothered no matter how many people died. The fact that Yui Yi returned was enough for him. But Elder Ying's subordinate Chang Huan had come back as well, which made Elder Yui rather displeased. Chang Huan is from Elder Ying's side and that kid is just a piece of useless trash. With this incident having become so big, how did he come out unscathed? Elder Yui asked showing his discontent. Now that the palace lord's health was deteriorating by the day, the daily affairs of the palace were all basically handled by him and Elder Ying. But though having flowers on the same stem bloom was good, how could it compare with having a lone blossom enjoy its limelight? Currently, the other elders of the Shadow Moon Palace were split into three factions, with one faction supporting him, one faction supporting Elder Ying and several more of them maintaining a neutral stance. Whoever held the most authority to speak among the Shadow Moon Palace's elders, would also command the most power, and to any one of them there, it posed great allure. The weak becomes meat for the strong to eat was applicable everywhere, and it was naturally the same in the Shadow Moon Palace. In this long game of elimination, this was the best way to adopt. If this trip to the Pure Grace Palace had also gotten rid of Elder Ying's subordinate Chang Huan, then it would naturally have been the best result Elder Yue could have hoped for. Towards Elder Yue's question, Yue Yi already had an answer prepared. He followed Jun Wu's instructions and replied, rounding up the entire scenario flawlessly. Although Elder Yue was still a little doubtful after listening to him, but he did not find any loopholes in the answer. Moreover, he did not believe that Yue would dare to deceive him. Chapter 1772, Yue 3. Jun Wuxi had just sat in the room for a short while when someone came to knock on her door. Opening the door to take a look, she saw it was a few youths wearing the Shadow Moon Palace's uniform, and they looked to be slightly older than Chang Huan. 
Hey Chang Huan, you're back at last. Come come come, your few elder brothers have something to show you. While saying that, one of the youths was already going to pull on Jun Wuxi's arm. Jun Wuxi deftly avoided his hand, doubt rising in her heart. Based on what Yue Yi had told her, Chang Huan did not have many companions he was close with. But these few youths had suddenly appeared and the only possibility could only be that Yue Yi did not really understand Chang Huan all that well and so the information he gave her was not entirely accurate as well. With things happening slightly differing from what she had been prepared for, Jun Wuxi reacted without showing any hesitation, and in order for her to better grasp the situation in the Shadow Moon Palace as soon as possible, she did not reject the youth's invitation, but had immediately stepped out to follow them. Along the way, the youths chattered on quite a bit, mostly about little things that had happened while Chang Huan had not been around, and about little instances of conflict within the Shadow Moon Palace. You don't know it, but when we heard from Elder Ying that you were going with Yue Yi to the Pure Grace Palace, it really gave the few of us quite a scare. I had been afraid that Yue Yi would discover that something was amiss midway and do something to harm you. One of the youths said conspiratorially, his face looking highly frightened. Luckily that kid is dumb and did not sense anything. And seeing that you've returned safely, we can set our hearts at ease. What would Yue Yi find to be amiss? Jun Wuxi narrowed her eyes up slightly. The words of these youths were fleetingly mentioning Yue Yi and from their way they were speaking, this Chang Huan and Yue Yi seemed to have something between them, but they had put it across unclearly, hence, Jun Wuxi was still not able to understand what they really meant at that moment. The youths were all chattering away merrily when they suddenly noticed Jun Wuxi's silence. They looked at each other and after exchanging glances between themselves, one of them finally spoke up, Chang Huan, have you gone dotty? For this matter, you promised it to us before you left and you shouldn't just go back on your word right? Oh? What did I promise you? Jun Wuxi asked as her eyebrow arched up, acting frivolously forgetful. The faces of the few youths immediately changed. Chang Huan. Could it be your skin is beginning to itch again? Don't think just because Elder Ying is shielding you and we will really not dare to do anything to you. Since you want to cultivate together with us, then you should at least show us some sincerity, and not be such a gutless coward just because you look like a girl. The youths who had initially been friendly and chatty, immediately changed their demeanor upon hearing Chang Huan saying he had forgotten what he promised. Jun Wuxi immediately understood that the youths before her had not come to seek Chang Huan because they were on good terms with him, but because they had made some special agreement between themselves and that was why they were being so friendly. And according to what they had said earlier, Jun Wuxi could almost be certain that the promise made between them earlier had something to do with Yue Yi. But, what could that be? I'm warning you, I have already gone to ask around clearly earlier. Yue Yi is now discussing things in Elder Yue's room and that little lass has just gone back to her room. At this time, it is basically when she will have to soak herself in her medicinal bath, so you have better not come act like you've suddenly gotten amnesia. A tall youth said as he shook her fist threateningly, Chapter 1773, Yue Yi, 4. You were the one that begged to leech onto us before, and guaranteed that you will prove your guts to us soon. We've already gone to great lengths to prepare everything for you so now you've just got to do it whether you want to or not. The youths had angry looks on their faces, and were being highly threatening. Jun Wuxi's mind whirled speedily, realizing that Chang Huan's situation in the Shadow Moon Palace was not too optimistic, guessing that he must have been ostracized for a long time and could not stand it any longer before he tried to stick to such a bunch of notorious kids. He had then agreed to some nefarious request from them, to prove himself with the deed. Looking at it now, that fool had not lost out when he was killed as this bunch of youths obviously did not think much of him. The supposed promise now seemed more like a way to toy with him and the fool had actually taken it seriously, which just showed how stupid he really was. Not knowing what kind of an agreement they had made before, Jun Wuxi then went along with them. The youths brought Jun Wuxi to come to the Hind Palace of the Shadow Moon Palace, 
and to pass through a garden before they came to a tranquil and quiet little courtyard. Quite a big variety of plants and flowers had been planted in the courtyard and they looked to be thriving rather well. June Wooks's gaze swept over the plants at the side and suddenly noticed that the seemingly regular plants were actually not that common. At one glance, she already saw several types of herbs that were suitable for cultivating elixirs and she did not know whether the gardener of this yard had done it intentionally but he had actually turned the soil within the yard to become like a herb garden, with just a sprinkle of decorative flowers. Go in quickly. The youths urged as they stood outside the courtyard. June Wuxi swept a glance over the expressions on the faces of the few youths and then lifted her foot to step inside. In her heart, she could roughly guess who the person in the courtyard really was but what made her think it strange was why the youths would make such an agreement with Chang Huan. Walking into the courtyard, it was all silent. The courtyard was not big, and a faint fragrance of herbs wafted in the air within the courtyard from beginning to end. But as the scent was rather overwhelmed by the fragrance of flowers, unless it was someone who was more sensitive to the smell of herbs, they might very easily overlook the scent. June Wuxi went nearer to the house within the courtyard with every one of her steps. She turned her head to glance at the youths standing outside the courtyard, and saw that the youths were quietly hiding themselves on one side, peeking in with only their heads showing. The sound of water came out from within the house and the youths waved their hands at June Wuxi anxiously, gesturing for her to quickly make her move. But June Wuxi had no intentions of following their instructions at all. She had come only to seek for clues, and not to fulfill the agreement Chang Huan had made with that bunch of people. She was not the real Chang Huan, so she had nothing to do with this bunch of guys at all. Damn it, has that kid lost his mind? Is he really just going to stand there and not move anymore? One of the youths asked when he saw that Jun Wuxi was not reacting to their repeated urgings, and could not help but curse out. He's just a totally useless coward. What else does he know besides licking Elder Ying's boots? They only saw Jun Wuxi walking one around within the courtyard, and then coming out from inside right before their eyes. The few youths were immediately unhappy and they all went stomping angrily forward to confront the kid, surrounding Jun Wuxi completely. Chang Huan, what do you mean by this? A tall youth asked Jun Wuxi, his face highly displeased. They had brought the kid all the way here, so to whom was this kid posturing to with such a look now? As he spoke, the few youths struck, going forward and seeking to show no mercy to Chang Huan. June Wuxi's eyes narrowed up slightly, and a cold glint flashed in her eyes, Chapter 1774, UAE, 5. June Wuxi's eyes narrowed up slightly, and a cold glint flashed in her eyes. This bunch of good-for-nothing kids really think she is that hilariously foolish Chang Huan? A pity. She wasn't, and neither did she intend to be like the real Chang Huan. What she seeked was to destroy the Shadow Moon Palace. And only that. Seeing the fist of one of the youths already flying straight towards Jun Wuxi's face, Jun Wuxi did not hide nor dodge but suddenly raised up her leg, that whipped out to kick right into that youth's abdomen. The youth who was a whole head taller than Jun Wuxi, had in just a blink of an eye, sent flying several meters away by that one kick. He crashed heavily to the ground, not moving in the slightest, it had just been an instant, which caused all the other youths to completely freeze. They knew very clearly what kind of capabilities Chang Huan possessed. It could be said that Chang Huan in the Shadow Moon Palace, although commanded a little bit of presence, but the powers he possessed was just not worth anyone's notice. Any one of the disciples dragged out would be able to toy and torment him and everyone knew that Chang Huan had only gained his status by doggedly following behind Elder Ying to fawn and flatter his way up. Deep in their hearts, not even a handful of people thought anything of Chang Huan and nobody saw any good in him. And none of them could have ever thought that the Chang Huan who had always not even possessed the strength to truss a chicken would suddenly explode in rage today and had even sent a youth who had attained the blue spirit flying with just one kick. You you scoundrel, what do you want? The youths who had gotten a rude shock felt the fire in their hearts rise once more. 
They did not for a moment believe that Chang Yuan's powers could possibly undergo any kind of breakthrough in such a short period of time. With the scene that had just happened, only ghosts would know what kind of a trick he must have employed to do it. You have chosen to shamelessly spurn us when we gave you a chance. If we do not teach you a good lesson today, you really think that no one in the Shadow Moon Palace can put you in your place? The youths whose humiliation had turned to rage rubbed their fists as they all leapt to pounce on June Wuxi. June Wuxi stood in her spot and did not move in the slightest as she stared at the people pouncing right at her, the corners of her mouth curling up into a sneer. A purple-colored spirit light flared out suddenly from her body and without waiting for the youths to even recover their senses, the figure of June Wuxi had already morphed into a purple-colored light streak to disappear right before their eyes. The youths could not even see the figure of June Wuxi clearly, but just felt a heavy force that struck them on their chests, bringing about sudden excruciating agony, the pain feeling like they had been smashed by an enormous boulder. All of a sudden, the arrogant and boastful youths were all sent flying into the air, every single one of them howling endlessly as they crashed onto the ground, the excruciating pain wrecking through their bodies causing them to not even have the strength to get up. June Wuxi walked over with contempt as she came before one of the youths. The youth lay on the ground, his hand clutching his chest that was feeling such excruciating pain, his eyes staring in utter disbelief at June Wuxi. Yu Yu, how is this possible? When did Chang Huan become a purple spirit? Jun Wuxi stepped her foot onto the youth's chest, the force under the foot immediately making the youth to grimace in pain. Teach me a lesson? With this lot of you? Jun Wuxi sneered, and lifting the point of her foot, she sent the youth flying once more, to crash straight into another youth who was struggling to climb to his feet. It had taken only an instant and the few youths were littered all over as they lay on the ground, the eyes that they were staring at June Wuxi with at that moment, filled with pure terror. Who could have thought that the once weak and frail youth would suddenly increase his powers so dramatically in less than a month's time? From an unremarkable yellow spirit, to shoot up into the purple spirit realm, Chapter 1775, UAE, 6. June Wuxi stood there looking down at them while a bunch of youths stood lying on the ground, pain and shock causing their bodies to shake uncontrollably. A purple spirit? That's a purple spirit. Among the younger generation of the Shadow Moon Palace, people who had been able to break through to the purple spirit before they turned twenty was only Yue alone. This was also why although Yue was not well liked by people, no one dared to go find trouble with him. But today, Right before their eyes, another purple spirit below the age of twenty had appeared once more. And that person, was actually the person that they had found most contemptible, Chang Huan. All of this, was completely unbelievable to the youths and something even harder to accept. What? Feeling indignant? June Wuxi raised an eyebrow slightly as she stared at the youths on the ground, her expression seemingly appreciating their pain and shock. She did not care what kind of a person Chang Huan was like, and neither did she want to bother herself with how Chang Huan was in the past. The only thing she wanted to achieve was to make the name Chang Huan become a presence that the Shadow Moon Palace would not be able to overlook from this moment on. Only by doing that, would she then be able to come into contact with the center of power in the Shadow Moon Palace, to get an opportunity for her to send this rotten Shadow Moon Palace down to hell. Having June Wuxi's cold gaze sweeping over them, every single one of the youths felt as if the blood in their bodies were about to congeal. They were all trembling as they shook their heads, not staring to speak another word to June Wuxi. Though they did not like what they saw in Chang Huan, but they did not possess the guts to go seek trouble from a purple spirit. The highest level of power among them, was merely just a blue spirit and even with the entire group of them bunched together, it would not be enough for June Wuxi to crush with just one finger. What are all of you doing? Just as the youths were being frightened out of their wits, a young and innocent voice suddenly sounded behind them. June Wuxi turned her head around upon hearing the voice, to discover a little girl wrapped in an underrobe standing timidly inside the courtyard. Her face was pretty, and she looked very much like Yue Yi. 
Yue's looks were already outstanding and this little girl's features were highly similar to Yue's, but beautiful in a more gentle way. The little girl's hair was still dripping with water, her feet bare upon the cold stone slabs, her large eyes filled with puzzlement. This is Yue? Yue's sister? Jun Wuxi quickly ascertained Yue's identity. Are all of you hurt? I'll go get a physician. When Yue saw the youths lying on the ground and vomiting out blood, her face became worried and she was right about to run out when Jun Wuxi stretched her hand out to stop her. When the shy little girl raised her head up to look at Jun Wuxi's face with that cold expression, she head subconsciously sank into her shoulders. They are fine. There is no need to get a physician. Although Jun Wuxi's words were spoken to Yue, her eyes had already drifted over towards the youths lying upon the ground. With that one sweep of Jun Wuxi's icy gaze, the youths immediately began shaking like injured fledglings. They were all already feeling such heart-rending pain but they still had to force themselves to put on a smile that made them look even uglier than when they cried towards Yue and say, fine we're fine. We're very good haha ha, we were just doing some friendly sparring with Junior Chang Huan here, seeing Jun Wuxi turning her gaze away, the youths immediately heaved a big sigh of relief. Their minds were already about to crumble into pieces at that moment. Just what kind of a sin had they committed that they had to be put through this? And what could have possessed Chang Huan that he would completely change into an entirely different person after coming back from the Pure Grace Palace? Chapter 1776, Strife and Intrigue, 1. Are all of you really alright? Yue was still a little worried as she looked at the group of youths. The youths were almost about to sob right out in front of Yue. Girl. We wouldn't dare say a thing no matter how hurt we are. We beg that you just don't ask us any more alright? Can't you see the look that star of calamity beside you is looking at us with? We just want to be completely forgotten now, please do not care about us anymore we beg you. Fine, couldn't be better. The youths were so deeply afraid that they would be whacked up by Jun Wuxi another time that they quickly struggled up to their feet from the ground, despite the fact that the pain was killing them. They still had to force a contorted smile on their faces as they helped each other to silently scramble away from Yue's and Jun Wuxi's sight. Watching the youths wretched escaping backs, Jun Wuxi arched up an eyebrow. Big brother Chang Huan? Jun Wuxi suddenly seemed to have noticed something and she turned her head to find that Yue was tugging at her clothes with her hand. It might be because Yue was Yue's sister that Jun Wuxi wasn't being that cold to Yue. Big brother Chang Huan is also a purple spirit? Yue asked with her head tilted, her face looking a little confused as she looked at Jun Wuxi. Jun Wuxi nodded. Are purple spirits all very powerful? Just like my big brother. He is also a purple spirit but he got himself hurt this time. Does big brother Chang Huan know what happened? Yue looked at Jun Wuxi with a worried expression. Despite Yue telling her that he was not badly hurt, Yue could still see that the color on his face did not look too good, showing obviously that he had been wounded. It's nothing much. Jun Wuxi knew how much Yue cared about his sister and she would naturally know that Yue wouldn't want the young Yue to know the darkness that pervaded this world, and she did not tell her too much. Yue opened her mouth like she was going to ask further when she saw Elder Yue suddenly leading a bunch of disciples and was coming towards Jun Wuxi with a highly darkened face. Yue was also following behind Elder Yue as he trailed behind at the back of the group, his gaze slightly surprised when it fell upon Jun Wuxi and Yue standing just beside her. But he then very quickly threw Jun Wuxi a cautionary glance before retracting his gaze, like nothing had ever happened. Chang Huan. Elder Yue came walking right up to Jun Wuxi. When he saw the purple spirit's glow that had not dissipated around Jun Wuxi's body, his eyes flashed with a trace of malice. How is it possible? When did this kid become a purple spirit? Elder Yue's heart jumped a little. Here, Elder. Jun Wuxi acknowledged indifferently. That easy and indifferent demeanor, immediately made Elder Yue's face to turn a shade darker. Do you know what you have just done? 
Elvi asked in a cold voice. Oh? What have I done? June Wuxi arched up an eyebrow. Elvi snorted derisively. Within the Shadow Moon Palace, its disciples are strictly prohibited from fighting among themselves, and knowing that, you have willfully violated those rules by wounding several disciples in broad daylight. Do you realize the severity of your actions? June Wuxi's eyes narrowed up as she stared at Elder Yui who had come prepared, an icy chill rising up in her heart. The speed that Elder Yui arrived here was a little too fast. The youths had just left not long ago and Elder Yui had already led a group of people to come here. If it was said that Elder Yui did not know anything about Chang Huan's agreement with those few youths before, Jun Wuxi would not believe a word of it. From the looks of the size of the group he brought here, Elder Yui must have planned all of this right from the start. Jun Wuxi had really not thought that with her just having come here to the Shadow Moon Palace, she would immediately be met with such a great show. Chapter 1777, Strife and Intrigue, 2. Chang Huan, we can disregard the usual misdemeanor you are always up to, but on this recent trip to the Pure Grace Palace, you had also contributed absolutely nothing at all. And now, you dared to violate the palace rules the very moment you come back, where you wounded your fellow disciples. You're exhibiting such sheer arrogance and showing complete disregard for anyone. Elder Yu berated Jun Wuxi in a highly self-righteous voice. Jun Wuxi had an eyebrow lifted as she looked at Elder Yui with his high posturing, and she sneered coldly in her mind. Elder Yui had really put an enormous hat onto her head. On the trip to the Pure Grace Palace for the birthday celebrations, he was claiming that she had not achieved anything. Could he even have possibly been hoping that she would be able to win some benefits while she was in the Pure Grace Palace and bring it back to hand it to the palace? Moreover, Jun Wuxi did not believe that Elder Yui really had a pair of such far-hearing ears that he would be able to know exactly everything that occurred here in such a short period of time right after it happened, and to bring with him a whole group of people to come find fault with him. It was obvious that Elder Yui had planned all of this. Jun Wuxi did not need to think much about it before she already knew what kind of intentions Elder Yui had in mind. Yui Yi was Yui Yi's younger sister and Elder Ying was not on good terms with Elder Yui for a long time. Yui Yi was Elder Yui's biggest chip in hand and if Yui Yi were to see his most precious little sister outraged by Elder Ying's most favored pupil, then based on Yui Yi's temperament, he would have lashed out right there on the spot. And even if Yui Yi were to beat Chang Huan to death, Elder Yui would be able to use the excuse that Chang Huan broke the palace rules as a cover, to bestow favor upon Yui Yi and at the same time rid himself of a pawn in the hands of his hated rival. It could be said that it was a scheme that gave him the best of both worlds. If not for that, Jun Wuxi wouldn't be able to have realized why Elder Yui would rush over here so fast or why those youths would dare to make such an agreement with Chang Huan even when they knew that Yui Yi was Elder Yui's adopted granddaughter. It was obvious that before Chang Huan had gone to the Pure Grace Palace, Elder Yui had already set up the trap, to wait for Chang Huan to fall into it himself. But what a pity, the one who returned from the Pure Grace Palace, was Jun Wuxi, and not that fool, Chang Huan. Elder Yui's scheme did not come out according to what he had planned, creating a misstep in his plan that was to kill two birds with one stone. All he was thinking of now was to get rid of Jun Wuxi now, which would still work out for him. Men. Arrest Chang Huan immediately and lock him up in the dungeon. Elder Yui did not give Jun Wuxi any chance to defend herself at all and just immediately ordered for the men to capture her, thinking to strike hard and fast to get rid of Chang Huan first. Several of the Shadow Moon Palace's disciples immediately walked towards Jun Wuxi, but how could Jun Wuxi possibly do nothing and just be a sitting duck? Before the disciples even got close, the purple-colored spirit glow that had just dissipated flared out once again. A dominating surge of spirit power pushed the disciples back in retreat in that instant. Chang Huan. Are you thinking of rebelling? This time? Elder Yui could clearly feel just how dense the spirit power coming out from Jun Wuxi's body really was. And upon seeing that, 
It just further steeled his resolve to want to get rid of Jun Wuxi. Chang Huan's power was originally not all that significant, but he had however gained the high favor of Elder Ying, who shielded the kid in the Shadow Moon Palace. Elder Yu was seeking to eradicate Chang Huan because he wanted to hit at Elder Ying's morale. But when the mediocre Chang Huan suddenly displayed such astounding spirit power, the urge in Elder Yue to have him killed greatly intensified. As his eyes, had undoubtedly seen that the spirit power on Jun Wuxi's body was thicker and denser than that of Yue Yi's. It was clear to see that Jun Wuxi's power had surpassed Yue Yi's and that was one point that Elder Yue I would not be able to tolerate. Kid. I will really like to see just what kind of great capabilities you hold. The glint of murder came to the surface in Elder Yue's eyes, and a silver slight suddenly shrouded Elder Yue's body. Chapter 1778, Strife and Intrigue, 3. Among the twelve palaces, people who were able to break through to the Silver Spirit were almost only the various palace lords themselves. But there were some elders who have already broken through to the Silver Spirit in existence, but the number of them were extremely rare. Elder Yui was considered to be the most senior in the Shadow Moon Palace and it was rumored outside that his powers could very well be above that of the current palace lord. Upon seeing that Silver Spirit Light appear now, Jun Wuxi was even more certain of that point. Kid, you think a purple spirit is all that great? Let me tell you, before a Silver Spirit, the purple spirit is just a helpless sheep waiting to be slaughtered. Elder Yui said with a disdainful sneer. Standing at the side, Yue Yi was bathed in cold sweat, highly worried for Jun Wuxi. He wanted to step forth to dissuade Elder Yue but was stopped by a glance from Jun Wuxi, so he could do nothing but remain in his spot. His fists tightly clenched at his sides. This was the prowess of Elder Yue. His powers, even when placed among the most powerful and elite of the other palaces, would have few able to compare, what's more in just the Shadow Moon Palace itself. Yue Yi had not slacked in his training from when he was very young, all because he sought to be able to surpass Elder Yue one day, and save himself and his little sister from the evil claws of Elder Yue. Having suffered under those claws of Elder Yue for so many years, Yue Yi knew it better than anyone, that this old man who looked to be benevolent and kindly, was in actual fact just how cruel and vicious. Jun Wuxi's eyes narrowed up as she stared at the spirit power swirling around Elder Yue, her eyes rising up with a cold glint. At the moment that Elder Yue was just about to capture Jun Wuxi, a voice suddenly rang out that held Elder Yue from moving. Elder Yue. What are you trying to do? A deep bellow filled with rage sounded. It was not known when Elder Ying had rushed over here as Elder Ying came leading a few other elders who supported him, making their way straight towards Elder Yue. Elder Yue cursed inwardly in his heart, but had no choice but to hold his hand. With a stern face, he then said, Elder Ying, this here is your good disciple? On the very day he just came back, he had already gotten into a fight and wounded several of our palace's disciples. Such brazen recklessness and if we do not properly instill in him the Shadow Moon Palace's rules, how much more atrocious will he grow to become? Elder Ying's brows creased up together. When he had just received the news, he had thought it to be ridiculous. He knew very well just what kind of capabilities Chang Huan possessed and if it was said that Chang Huan was able to injure several of the Shadow Moon Palace's disciples, he wouldn't believe it even if you beat him to death. But when he saw the purple-colored spirit glow around Jun Wuxi's body, Elder Ying's heart quaked violently. Purple spirit. The kid has actually broken through to the realm of the purple spirit. How is it possible? Elder Ying's heart was filled with doubt, but with Elder Yui's predatory eyes gazing so covetously at the side, he was unable to investigate deeper into it. Since Elder Yui is aware that Chang Huan is my disciple, then if commits a wrong, it will naturally be me who will deal with it. Since Elder Yui is preaching on the palace rules, then I will talk to you about the palace rules. Have you forgotten? In our Shadow Moon Palace, if a disciple makes an infraction, then the elder guiding them will have to deal with them accordingly, and others are not to stick their hand in with disciplining the disciple? Elder Ying said as he raised his chin slightly, 
putting himself right between Elder Yue and Jun Wuxi, his towering figure completely blocking Jun Wuxi from Elder Yue's sight, looking highly protective of his charge. Elder Yue discreetly clenched his jaw. The Shadow Moon Palace's rules were as Elder Ying had said, and that was why he had immediately led his people to come rushing over, seeking to get rid of Jun Wuxi before Elder Ying discovered anything, never expecting that Elder Ying would come rushing over in time. Chapter 1779, Strife and Intrigue, 4. Since Elder Ying is saying that, I believe that Elder Ying should know how to deal with this matter. Those wounded disciples need someone to give them a satisfactory answer. I will report this matter to the Lord and I think the Lord believes that Elder Ying will be able to deal with the matter appropriately. Elder Yue said with a sneering smile, hiding the rage within his heart. That he had failed to get rid of Jun Wuxi this day, caused Elder Yue to be filled with regret. Yue Yi was the most outstanding disciple among the younger generation in the Shadow Moon Palace but now Chang Huan had popped up unexpectedly from nowhere. It would still be good if the incident could be used to suppress Chang Huan's newfound prominence as if he was not stifled and pressed down, then whether it was for Yue Yi or for Elder Yue himself, it might affect them adversely. Elder Yue can rest assured. I will naturally deal with it according to the palace rules. Elder Ying said. With the matter having come to this, Elder Yue was not able to strike Jun Wuxi down anymore, and could now do nothing but leave reluctantly. When Yue Yi was leaving, he showed obvious hesitation as he turned his head to look at Yue Yi standing there with her feet bare and her eyes filled with worry. But Elder Yue's gaze made him not dare to tarry a moment longer but to turn his eyes away to catch up with the group in silence. The moment Elder Yue left, Elder Ying immediately kept away his aggressive demeanor and turned himself around, to look at Jun Wuxi standing right behind him, his eyes looking rather complicated. Jun Wuxi stared straight back into Elder Ying's eyes, without avoiding his gaze at all. You rascal, stirring up trouble for me the very moment you come back. I need to account for this incident to those disciples in the palace, so you just follow me back now and I will definitely have to punish you properly for this. Elder Ying said with his brows creased together in a frown, his voice stern. The other elders then dispersed at a signal from Elder Ying and Jun Wuxi retracted the spirit power shrouding her body before she went to follow behind Elder Ying. A slight breeze blew past, tinged with a slight chill which made Yue Yi who stood the shiver in cold. She stared at the back view of Jun Wuxi which was growing more distant, no one knowing what was going through her mind. It might be because she was feeling the chill as her body trembled and she quickly hugged her arms to run back inside her own little courtyard. Elder Ying did not bring Jun Wuxi to the place where disciples of the Shadow Moon Palace received their punishments, but instead led Jun Wuxi back to his room. Once inside, Elder Ying sat himself down on the chair, and he could not help but scanned his eyes over Jun Wuxi from head to toe. Kid, aren't you going to tell me honestly just what is it with that spirit power you have on you? Elder Ying asked with his eyes narrowed up. Doesn't the Elder think that this is good? Jun Wuxi asked, with a shrug of her shoulders, and not the slightest bit of nervousness was seen on her. Good? What's so good about it? That fella, that elder you I had wanted to have you killed today. Do you really think that the purple spirit is all that invincible? Haven't you seen how badly suppressed that kid, Yue is by elder Yue? Although your powers are higher than Yue's by a stretch, but all below the silver spirit are deemed to be insignificant louses. You couldn't possibly be unaware of the impossible gap between a purple spirit and a silver spirit would you? Would you believe that if Elder Yu I had his heart set on wanting to have you eradicated today, with your skills, you would not be able to even withstand three strokes from him? Elder Ying asked in a deep voice. In whose hands the prized deer will finally fall into, how could anyone possibly know without even giving it a try? Jun Wuxi had an eyebrow arched up, her eyes rising with a glint of confidence. Elder Ying drew in a deep breath. Chang Huan. Or should I call you by another name? Elder Ying's words were shocking, having actually seen through Jun Wuxi's disguise. But against that question from Elder Ying, 
Jun Wuxi was not showing the least bit of panic, but instead went walking over to a chair at the side to sit herself down, chapter 1780, taking what each needs, one. If you like, you can continue to call me Chang Huan. Jun Wuxi said to Elder Ying indifferently. Elder Ying had not thought that after Jun Wuxi's disguise had been seen through, she could still remain so calm and the gaze he was looking at her with then unconsciously filled up with a trace of admiration. You've got some guts. Although I do not know who you are, but you actually dare to come sneak into the Shadow Moon Palace disguised as Chang Huan. Aren't you afraid that I will immediately reveal your identity to others and make it impossible for you to walk out of the Shadow Moon Palace alive? Jun Wuxi lifted up her eyes to look at Elder Ying to reply, if you had such intentions, you would have handed me over to Elder Yue just now. Although Chang Huan did not have anyone he was especially familiar or close with in the Shadow Moon Palace, but Elder Ying often provided backing for Chang Huan and he would naturally know Chang Huan a lot better than others. Jun Wuxi had known it all along that if she used her powers today, she would have then exposed her identity to Elder Ying. The sudden increased powers, in the eyes of others, could have been due to Chang Huan hiding it to not attract attention, but for Elder Ying who was the person responsible for guiding and teaching Chang Huan, he would naturally know very clearly of the kind of talent and the state of Chang Huan's meridians. A person might due to a fortuitous encounter or some special reason be able to achieve a breakthrough of their powers to realms they would usually not be able to attain but no one could possibly shoot from a yellow spirit to the purple spirit's fourth stage in just a mere month. A human body's meridians had its own limits and before they are given careful nursing, it is impossible to break through those limits. And the nursing process was an extremely slow one, and not something that could be achieved in just one short month. June Wuxi had been brazenly daring today because she had her own reasons for it. Kid. A person shouldn't be too arrogant. The taste of one's downfall due to overconfidence isn't all that sweet. Elder Ying sighed softly. Although his face showed disapproval, the meaning behind Elder Ying's words instead seemed to verify what Jun Wuxi was guessing in her mind. Whether I'm arrogant or not is not important. What's important is whether I can be of use to you. Jun Wuxi said as she lifted up a teacup, to slowly sip from it. The Shadow Moon Palace Lord's health is deteriorating by the day and most of the palace's daily affairs are handled by you and Elder Yue. A mountain cannot contain two tigers and Elder Yue and you are like fire and water. He holds in his hand the most outstanding young disciple in the Shadow Moon Palace while your subordinates clearly number next to nothing. But just one piece of useless trash like Chang Huan. All of this, doesn't it make you feel that aggrieved in the slightest? Jun Wuxi asked, an eyebrow raising up as she looked at Elder Ying. Elder Ying drew in a deep breath. What you say is correct, but at the same time erroneous. Although I am not on good terms with Elder Yue, it is not because of power within the Shadow Moon Palace. Oh? Jun Wuxi then went. Elder Ying looked at Jun Wuxi, but did not seem like he intended to continue speaking about it. Kid. Whatever your objective is here in the Shadow Moon Palace, I do not care. But if you wish to continue to live while remaining safe and sound in the Shadow Moon Palace, you have to help me do one thing. Elder Ying suddenly said. Jun Wuxi felt that Elder Ying was a little strange, different from the other elders of the Twelve Palaces who were all blinded by greed. This Elder Ying seemed to possess his a strong belief of his own but as to what that belief was, Jun Wuxi really found it unfathomable. But, as long as one seeked something, then it would be possible for enemies to turn into friends. No matter what Elder Ying's motives were, there was one similar point they both shared. And that was they both would not be pleased to see Elder Yui living too comfortably. What is it? Jun Wuxi asked. I need you to help me go into Elder Yue's library, to look into something. Elder Ying's eyes darkened slightly, 